Hey, it's me, Tim, and welcome back to my series on building a guitar from the New Perspective Music DIY Guitar Kit. If you'll remember the first installment, I showed that I have some downloadable plans and some CNC files and whatnot available over at newperspectivesmusic.com, as well as I'm in the process of stocking up parts so you don't have to make all the parts yourself from the digital plans. So I'm filming that while I go for partly to just, you know, teach people about how I make guitars in my current system, but also for people that, that are using these kits so they can see the steps that I take to turn those CNC files into actual pieces of wood and then other things I need to do to those pieces of wood to make them actual guitar. So last installment, I showed my process for CNC machining out these neck blanks and these fingerboard blanks. And today I'm going to put frets in them and join them. Now, here's where it's going to get a little bit controversial because there's a bunch of different ways to do this. And I'm going to show you the way that I do it. And this might not be the way that you do it. might not be the way you were taught or you've seen other people do it. And that's okay because there is more than one way to do everything. So I put the frets in the fretboard before I glue it onto the neck. And the reason I do that is because it's nice and flat. And I actually start to clean them up before I even put it on too, which I'll show you all these processes right now. Um, I'm gonna use some of my fancy tools and I'm gonna show you uh, some shortcuts so maybe you don't need to use the fancy tools if you don't have them. All right, let's dig in. Our first step is going to be to put this fret wire into the fingerboard. And you can see this is what fret wire basically looks like. It's got a little bit of a tang on the bottom and then there's the the fret part that you play up there and i i buy this in bulk and as i mentioned in last week's video you can buy just enough to do one guitar you can actually buy them pre-cut but um i'm working from this today to discuss some of the basics this is our fingerboard in a fairly rough state pretty much right off the cnc uh, i did sand it to about 320 um, and you see we have these pre-cut slots that i cnc in and you'll also notice that they don't go all the way to the end because i like to keep the end looking a little bit clean uh, and this is not a flat piece of wood. It has a 16 inch radius. There's uh, many different radiuses for guitars. This is the one that I prefer to use. So what I want to do is I want to stick this little piece of wire, the sharp part into that slot, but you'll see the wire is flat right now. So I need to curve it just a little bit so it fits in. And uh, I want to curve it to about 16 inch radius so it'll be an almost perfect fit but I tend to go just a little bit over that so it has to sort of squeeze in and there's a little bit of tension on it um there's lots of different ways to do it this is how I do it so before I do all that though I actually want to put a little bit of finish on these boards because once the frets are in it's difficult to finish them and I'm sure I'll be doing some touch-ups and stuff as I go um, but this is something I've been doing lately just finishing them first before I get the frets in. So I'm not trying to like get finish on around the frets or any of that stuff. There's a few ways I could go about finishing these. Um, obviously I try to avoid using high VOC stuff like lacquers and everything. Um, sometimes and usually I would do shellac or maybe a water-based finish like a total boat. Um, Halcyon finish or something like that. But what I've been really into right now, this is my first time trying it on a fingerboard is this uh, earth paint natural varnish. This is, um, it's an oil-based uh, varnish like an old recipe based on like basically grain alcohol and it's all plant-based it's it's pretty eco-friendly and uh, I've been experimenting with it a lot so first time trying it on the fingerboards let's see how it works I'm just going to use this this brush and I want to I want to just get the top looking good basically uh, I'm not worried about the sides or anything because I still have a lot of a lot of work to do there I just don't want to have to get finish on around the frets while those fingerboards are drying, I can start getting my fret wire ready and I'm going to use my fret radius tool. So this is a little thing that I can feed the fret wire through and arch the fret wire to the radius that I want. Um, you don't have to buy one of these. Uh, I actually made one in a video a bunch of years ago out of some old uh, fidget spinners um, that worked okay, but I do enough of it that I wanted to get something a little bit better and easier to use, which is why I bought this. And if you're just doing one guitar and you have straight wire like this that isn't pre-radius, you can actually just just bend it by hand, just really carefully, see? And you'll get it close enough to what you need. There are a lot of companies that sell guitar tools like this for finding radiuses and checking them. I have one that I cut on my laser to a bunch of different sizes that are harder to find. And I can check that here and I can see like, well, you know, I need to do a little bit of work, uh, but I'm pretty close to where I wanna be. You don't have to do this, you can do it by eye. You can just match it up to your fingerboard. Um, you can also draw a circle or a half circle on your workbench and just line it up to that. Now to push the frets into the wood, I'm gonna use this tool, it's a fret press, and you can see it has this very specifically made little call in there that's 
at my 16 inch radius. And the way these are designed to be used is you put them into an arbor press, then you press down. I don't have an arbor press, so I just use my drill press. If you don't have all that, just use a hammer. Um, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. This is a brass hammer I made um, from an old drumstick. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't want to use steel because it'll be stronger than the fret and be more likely to dent the fret. So you want to use brass or something a little bit softer. And I'll show you all that. The other thing I need to do is I need to cut the frets to size and I need to clean them up. Uh, and there is this, these special nippers that they make for cutting the frets flush that has like a square or a head, but it's basically identical to this. Some people buy just these regular bull nips and actually grind them and shape them themselves to work better. I think this is fine just the way it is. I never even bothered. I don't want to mess mess with sharpening the sharpening of it, you know, by screwing it up or anything. Other thing that you might want to do is remove some of the tangs on the end. Uh, and they make these little tools that are called fret tang nippers that are pretty expensive. Um, and they actually, you can just look up nippers uh, and it's identical and they're, you know, one tenth the cost because it's not for guitars. Uh, you can buy one of those or you can just use any other type of pair of pliers and just sort of cut, cut that, you know, maybe file it with a file or, or uh, actually I even use my little one inch sanding belt and I can just sort of sand those off. And I have this whole other video here you can watch where I talk about a lot of these, these tools that I, I made myself and how I save some money. Since all my fingerboards are over there drying, I'm going to use this neck uh, to just measure and cut my frets. And uh, you'll see I have this little block of wood here. Um, I just put the frets in. I'm actually working on four necks right now. So I don't know if I can fit all, all four in each one of these holes, but I'll start with the zero fret and I just simply line the fret up with the end and then snip the other end with my pliers and we get a fret that is almost perfectly sized just a tiny bit over just because the plier is a little bit off but that's what I want. Like I mentioned I'm doing a batch of fingerboards right now so I have to cut four for each but obviously you would just cut one of each fret. I actually should have checked a l one clip sooner because I can see here, I'm not gonna get two frets out of here. And so there's gonna be a lot of waste there. So I'm gonna go and cut one of my longest frets from this piece so I have just a little bit less waste. A little tough to film this, but uh, I'm just using that nipper to take a little bit of the tang off the end of each fret so it's not sticking out the side of your fingerboard like a lot of guitars do. And since I'm cutting my fret slots on a CNC, I don't have to cut them all the way through the end, so I can actually just leave the wood complete there. You also see a lot of guitars that use a little bit of wood filler uh, in those end slots. Uh, the CNC makes that a uh, thing of the past. You can use a little steel wool or scotch right to, uh, you know, just sort of smooth that finish out, that looks pretty good. And now that I've uh, done this, I'm ready to fret it, but I wanna make sure I clean out all of my fret slots because I definitely got some finish and some sawdust in there and stuff. Now they make uh, little tools for doing this sort of thing, of course, because they make tools for everything. So this is like a little, little sort of mini saw with just blades on either side. So you can kind of go in and sort of clean it out a little bit like that. Now, if you don't have this tool, of course, there's other ways. You might have like a little marking knife like this that you could use, a razor blade, maybe, and just go through there and clean it out a little bit. Uh, or you can just use like a, a regular old skinny saw, like this little pull saw, maybe just use the back corner. You know, just as long as it's something that's skinnier than that slot. So with my frets cut to the proper length for the slot, the little ends cleaned off and a radius put into the fret that matches the neck, I can sort of just set the fret down with my fingers and give it a little push, just enough to hold it still while I grab this press that I have and push them in. And it's, uh, it's once you're all set up and you do all this prep work, it goes pretty quickly. Once I've done all this, I just go by with my brass hammer and tap all the ends in just to make sure they're all nice and flush because remember there's just a little bit of that tang missing there so it might not have pressed in. I just give it that final shape like that and if you don't have a press you can just put the whole fret in with a hammer just like this. Just careful not to hit too hard in one spot and bend the radius that you've uh, bent into them which will make it a little bit trickier to set it in. And if you feel like your fret's a little loose in there and needs a little help uh, just put a little bit of super thin CA glue in to make sure it doesn't move. I think one of the reasons most guitar makers don't put the frets in on the fingerboard before it's glued in is because they're concerned about having all these little metal wedges 
go into this piece of wood and kind of force it into a curve. There, it, it could potentially give like a bit of an upward bow in the wood. You can see here that there's just a tiny bit, a tiny bit of uh, deflection from doing that. I don't worry about it for two reasons. One reason is once it's glued to the neck, that same pressure is being applied anyways. It just might not actually give the wood an opportunity to move because it's already supported. Uh, and the other reason is, is if for some reason that isn't true, um, I don't mind actually gluing a fingerboard on with a little bit of an up bow in the middle because that's, if anything, going to add upward tension to my neck, uh, which when the strings go on, are gonna counteract that and pull it this way. So if anything is gonna make it easier for me to get the neck level or slightly bowed, uh, working the truss rod potentially in reverse even, um, because that's the direction that the pressure needs to go. Now, if, if fretting it meant that my guitar neck was gonna arch this way, then I would, I would definitely not wanna do it that way because that's the way the guitar is gonna to wanna to arch under tension. But So for me, it's just a lot easier to get the frets in while it's all nice and flat like this than on the neck. I use this belt sander to just quickly file down those rough ends of the frets. And then I actually use it to also put a slight bevel on all of these all at once. And I just do it by eye and I do it very carefully. You can very easily screw up all your work to this point doing this. So this is not for the faint hearted and it takes a little bit of practice to make sure you don't accidentally change the shape of your neck or put a divot in it. Not recommended. Do as I say, not as I do. This is a much safer way for a million reasons, primarily being that the sanding surface is the length of the fingerboard, so you're not running the risk of not sanding one part while you sand another and putting a dent in, and obviously you're doing it by hand, so things are slower and more in control. I just have a piece of sandpaper stuck to a flat piece of wood. But here you can still sand too much and make your fingerboard skinnier than it is designed to be, which you may want or you may not. Just make sure you know what you're doing and you do it on purpose. This is a tool I made that uh, helps you put that bevel on the edge of the frets. They sell these things and they're very expensive, but all I did is cut a slot at a slight angle and stuck a regular old bastard file in there. You'll want to do a dry fit of your truss rods to make sure they all fit in here good. And these two fit fine, but for whatever reason, this one is just a little bit, a little bit proud. So I could put it in there and actually grind the metal down. But instead what I'm going to do, I'm just lower this slot just a little bit here. It seems to be just at the top really, but it's just a little shallow for some reason. And now, uh, that's, that's pretty flush in there. I'm just gonna go one quick little pass here. Just take a little bit more out. So now I'm gonna mix up a little bit of five minute epoxy and I'm gonna glue in each end with these truss rods. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue down here in the end. That's all I need just to hold it still and keep it in place. CNC woodworking gives you the opportunity to really measure things to the thousandth of an inch and get a lot of accuracy, but wood in the real world is actually not that accurate. And so sometimes you'll find a little thing like that where the slot will just be a little shallow or a little deep, but it's always like a, you know, a thousandth of an inch kind of a difference. And, uh, that can make a huge difference when you're trying to glue two pieces of wood together. I just use regular wood glue to glue the fingerboard to the neck. Now I have these special little guitar neck clamps, which are a little bit slow, but I like them because they can evenly apply pressure all over the place. But you can also just use regular clamps and, and do this and just be careful to try and make a perfect fit uh, along the edge and get it to look as nice as possible. You'll see I use a couple spring clamps to just uh, get my things basically lined up so I could go in and get all of these uh, straps in place which sort of center everything anyways just by design and then I use some regular wood clamps on the flat parts to uh to make sure that's all glued together good and you know it, everything's flat so it shouldn't be too hard to get together if you make sure that truss rod isn't sticking up. So now I have these glued together they're all looking pretty good uh and I can go in I can clean up that heavy edge that I intentionally left there's my tab is still there and stuff. I'm going to start with just a rasp a handheld rasp and just quickly round that over and then sand this to about 120 grit and that's how I send them out in the kit. Um, however, you obviously would wanna, you know, sand and finish the rest of the way. Couple things to note is, um, like I have a little bit of glue to clean up here and stuff, but while I'm sanding, I wanna be very careful not to sand too much up here because I don't wanna change the shape of this and make this smaller. And the other thing you always wanna be careful about when you're sanding is not to sit and sand in the spot too long. Like you don't wanna accidentally you know, put a divot or change the shape of this. So just don't be aggressive as you sand this in. Be very careful and aware of your edge. Uh, 
Notice I'm not hitting the fingerboard right now, just the neck. So you see how very quickly we have the rounded shape we're looking for there. Now you can take advantage of this time if you want to change the neck shape a little bit to your specific feel that you like or you want to make it a little bit thinner, here's where you do it. Just be careful to go even and consistent so you don't make divots. The worst part of sanding these necks is getting into these uh, little spots here where you see there's some some chatter mark from the end mills. Uh, you got to do that by hand. Or if you might have some kind of small detail sander that I don't have. Now before each neck that I make goes up for sale on the website, I check and make sure the truss rod's working and I just use my little uh, fret guide ruler here to, or my straight edge to make sure the neck is nice and straight, the truss rod works, looks good. And I'll use my fret leveling tool to just check and make sure everything is, is nice and level but the fret job will not be done we'll talk about that in future videos but you're still going to want to go and clean the edges up and crown and polish them there might be uh, a few little spots that need to be dealt with after it you know sort of settles into stuff but i do want to make sure it's fairly close for you and i would also recommend checking out i have another video i mentioned earlier um, that just shows all of the different uh tools that get used for this type of work and also some ways to avoid purchasing them in some of my shortcuts and and, uh, and DIY things that I do uh, that will come in handy for you if you're not making a lot of guitars and you don't want to buy a tool that you're never going to use again. And this is just a little bit high right here. You can see we can't seat that in a little. There we go. So that's how you go from those digital files that I created to having a neck blank ready to get finished and made into a guitar. Uh, so again, these are not done. There is a little bit of fret work that still needs to be done and some finished sanding and obviously these need headstocks carved out, but they're pretty close. And you can see that if you take it one step at a time, it's not as overwhelming as it seems to just look at like a, a digital drawing and a block of wood and, and see this inside it. Go one step at a time and, and just follow the procedures and it's not that hard. Now, if you don't want to do this, but you still want to make your own guitar, uh, I know that's common for a lot of people because the necks are daunting. Uh, I'm stocking these at newperspectivedudes.com. So you can just uh, get me to do this work for you and then go to the, the easier and the more fun stuff of making the body and fitting it together and finishing it and making it, you know, look and feel the way you want it to look and feel without having to get into the weeds on this detail. So that's always a possibility too. I'm gonna to try to keep my website stocked with this type of stuff as much as I can. Um, and these three are going in the store right now. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next time where we'll start doing some of the body cutting out and all that stuff. And then we'll you know go further into putting the whole guitar together. Uh, I'm gonna finish that guitar I started in the first video as well as I have another one over here that I'm working on. Um, that is for a, a special client that's going to show maybe some ways that might inspire you to customize your kit to make the guitar special and unique to you. All right, thanks a lot and be good. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you enjoy the fact that I'm not always trying to sell you mattresses or food subscriptions in the middle of my videos. And one of the ways we can keep me from having to do that is by supporting my work either at patreon.com or via any of the number of products that I actually make and sell right here on the site, such as guitar parts, tools, t-shirts, even toys for guinea pigs. All the links are below.